Hey, this is Robert Nanny, your spray foam advisor. And we just recently moved into a new house in uh, Mary Esther, Florida. It's a new place for us. Uh, we got a great deal. We're really looking forward to the move and to being in our new residence. And uh, we have a couple projects on the old property, and then we'll be ready to turn that one into a rental and add that to our portfolio. But uh, I'm not quite set up here in my office, but business doesn't wait. You know, that's uh, that's we all know that. We all know that. No matter what your circumstances, what your conditions, what your situation, even when you have boxes that haven't been unpacked, a, a bookcase that hasn't been shelved, and uh, stuff going on around you, you still have to uh, get down to business. And what I want to share with you today is a tip about hybrid insulation systems. So, for those of you that may not be familiar with that, it's when you take an air impermeable insulation like spray foam and you combine it with a traditional insulation like fiberglass or cellulose. And so the result is say a, a one inch or two inch pass of closed cell foam in a two by four cavity and backfilling that with say fiberglass. So if you have a three and a half inch cavity, a two by four cavity, you put one inch of closed cell foam and then you shove a bat in there to take up the remainder two and a half inches that is a hybrid application you can also do it it can also be accomplished with open cell foam for example in a two by six uh, stud cavity application um, or in more often with open cell foam we might see it in an attic floor application where you spray three to five inches of open cell foam and then cover the top of that with cellulose or fiberglass with blown cellulose or blown fiberglass to get additional R value. So today I want to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of these types of systems. And so first and foremost some of the key advantages. Why do these type of systems exist? Well uh, we know that spray foam is not uh, the least costly product on the market and oftentimes our customers don't understand why. They don't understand the value proposition, they don't understand the grand scheme of things and it can often, uh, you know, price can often be a tipping point in the conversation. And so someone that might be bidding uh, two and a half or three inch of closed cell foam in a wall cavity, they might be able to interest their customer in a partial spray foam application if they offer one inch or two inches uh, in a cavity with backfilling the rest of that space with a traditional insulation. Therefore, a hybrid insulation system gets created. Uh, another scenario would be in an attic application where we might have an R38 or R49 code requirement to achieve uh, the required insulation values in that area. And to do that with all spray foam, even with open cell foam, could be quite costly and we may lose the bid. And so when we're talking to the customers and we find out that price point may be a very, very high uh, point in the conversation, right? It may, may be a hot button for them. Um, it oftentimes can be beneficial to, uh, to lower the thickness of spray foam insulation from a sales standpoint, from a getting the job, winning the job standpoint. And, um, you know, three to five inches of open cell foam is still going to get our air seal. And then, you know, that'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of R13 to R20. And then we can uh, add additional R value on top of that, for example, in an attic application, an attic floor application, to achieve the R38 or R49 requirement that is required for that code jurisdiction. So those are some of the advantages, some of the reasons that you might see a hybrid insulation system uh, in play. And, and really it comes down to being able, being able to achieve uh, higher R values typically for code purposes at a cost effective way in a cost effective manner. One, some of the key disadvantages that we need to be aware of though is oftentimes um, you know the systems are not necessarily going to perform the same as uh, full fill uh, with spray foam insulation. So if you only have three and a half inches of space if you were able to do uh, you know three inches of closed cell foam in that space you're going to have close to an R20, R21 in that two by four cavity. And if you put in say an inch of closed cell foam at R7 with two, two and a half inches of a bat on top of that, that R13 or R11 bat that gets compressed and shoved into space doesn't hold its full uh, uncompressed value. And so you're gonna have a derated um, 
performance out of that fiberglass bat, for example, that's shoved into place. And so it might, that R13 might perform at an R8 or R9, and uh, combined with the R7, you're going to have around an R, um, call it R17, uh, R16, R17, R15, 16, 17, somewhere in that range uh, from an R value standpoint. Um, but you're also going to have a, a cavity system that has exposed air permeable insulation on the interior face of that cavity. And what does that mean? It means moisture, it means humid air on the inside of the building is going to have access to that cavity and to the insulation in that cavity. And if you have closed cell foam in that cavity, for example, then you there is a risk, there is a potential for getting condensation um, in between the surface of the closed cell foam and the traditional insulation, the fiberglass bat or the cellulose, whatever it may be that you're using in that application. So one of the key disadvantages, one of the key challenges really with the system is making sure that whatever climate zone you're working in, that you have enough air impermeable insulation or enough spray foam insulation in this situation to mitigate the risk of condensation at the layer between the spray foam and the traditional insulation. So in climate zones one, two, and three, typically we can get away with about one to one and a half inches of closed cell foam. But as we start moving into climate zones four, five, six, seven, um, there are some very specific criteria for how these assemblies can be created effectively. And we can do them, they can be done. But I have seen them messed up more uh, than I've seen them done successfully. And, and a big portion of that is not being able, not knowing the right thickness of insulation to put in place, of spray foam insulation to put in place before you backfill. Um, I guarantee you if you try to spray one inch of closed cell foam in climate zone six in New York, and um, one inch of closed cell foam and backfill at two by four, two by six cavity, with fiberglass bat, you will have condensation in that cavity at some point throughout the year. So you have to make sure that you understand this hybrid insulation system well enough that you know how much air impermeable insulation or spray foam insulation you need in that cavity to mitigate risk, uh, to mitigate moisture risk and condensation risk in that cavity. That's really the big disadvantage of the system and the big, I, I shouldn't even call it a disadvantage, I should call it a risk. It's a risk assessment that you have to be aware of and you have to take, um, uh, take on your own and understand how you're compiling this system to make sure if you're offering hybrid applications to your contractors, to your builders, to your customers, to, to your homeowners, that you know the minimum amount of air impermeable insulation or spray foam insulation you need in that cavity based on the product you're working with, whatever manufacturer you're working with, and the climate zone you're working in to make sure you don't have the risk of getting condensation inside the cavity um, really during all parts of the year. Um, the big issue up north is going to be, of course, during winter time when our vapor drive is from the warm, humid interior where we're creating moisture, where we're eating, breathing, bathing, cooking, etc. That moisture in the air as it accumulates is going to be driving outward to the exterior where it's uh, cooler and where it's less humid and where the vapor pressure is lower. And So that interior vapor pressure driving outward is going to carry that moisture, that warm, moist air uh, to the through the, uh, the wall assembly and as it gets closer and closer to the outside, um, there is a potential risk of condensation inside that cavity. You have to make sure that you have enough insulation, enough air impermeable insulation, so that you don't have condensation in that cavity. And that's really the biggest key to creating effective hybrid um, insulation systems. And this will be a plug for SPFA right here. SPFA has created a hybrid insulation documentation. It's a guideline for how to uh, construct um, the right ratios of insulation, the right ratios of air permeable versus air impermeable insulation for different climate zones. Definitely go check out that hybrid insulation documentation that is available from SPFA. Hopefully you found this topic of hybrid insulation systems interesting because over the next couple of weeks, 
what I'm going to do is take a couple of key examples from different climate zones across the U.S. and I'm going to show you how to do the uh, the thickness calculations and what your thickness ratio should be for a couple of different climate zones across the U.S. This has been Robert Ninety with Spray Foam Advisor. Thanks for checking us out. Catch us on some more videos.